Okay, so how's everybody doing? Thanks for tuning in. So this is uh, the next update on the Atlas Gold MP15DC SRY Surrey Rail Link conversion. This began life as originally as a uh, Amtrak uh, livery, so I, uh, I gave it a 99% isopropyl bath for a day and stripped all the paint off it. And then I have to apply a few minor modifications, which I'll describe to you here, and then a quick pointer on the chassis and the prep before the speaker box and uh, how I mount the ditch lights quickly, okay? So here's the uh, base for the cab. I, In this case, I lost the sand filler hatch here, so I had to scratch up two out of evergreen plastic with some tubing and a little cap on there, and I'll put a little hinge detail on there. Uh, and the cab is... All I had to do really was remove the horn, fill the two holes here, added a uh, antenna plate here, a little firecracker antenna. Uh, then there's this full length uh, typical sunshade on SRY rail units, uh, reinforced with doweling here, and then glued right straight onto the cab so it's nice and strong. Like you'd have to mangle that to knock that off. And then um, with the brake latch detail here, the brake handle here was sort of had this fat embossed opening on the inside, which is going to affect the size of the speaker box that I want to install in here. I want to maximize as much room as I can. So I knocked that off, kept the handle, and just packed it out with 10 thou right here, and then remounted the handle. And then, of course, these sand filler blisters had to come off because they're not on the prototype. So I managed to pry those off. They were really hard to get off. I probably caused a little bit of damage there, which I filled. There's a bit of a few scratches there, which are fine. You can see those on the prototype anyway. And then I packed out the back of these with 10 thou. Okay on both sides and then I remounted the sand filler hatch and then framed it up like the prototype and it'll look really good once it's painted and cleaned up. But now the only problem with this is even with the 10 thou plate back here, um, I'm going to have issues fitting it over the boss on the frame as you can see it. I can't seat the uh, long hood down on the frame here without bowing out the, the sides. So what I'm going to do is just file down 10 thou or 15 thou on each side and so that'll slip up inside. And now that I have the chassis in my hand, I'll show you I'm going to mount the new speaker box on here. I'm, I'm getting rid of this factory piece and see how it pops on there and screws on there. There's so much wasted space here for a good speaker enclosure so that goes. I'm going to rebuild a new one out of 30 or 40 thou, as I've done with the Jeep 9-122 and the SD38-381. you see in those previous uploads how I did that. And then with the mounting of the ditch lights, um, you can see how I mounted the plastic evergreen 10 thou plate on there. Okay, so here's a little tip for those who may or may not know uh, when you're going to mount uh, ditch lights and the pilot doesn't quite match up to accommodate the ditch lights, which is often the case. This can be done on just a stock locomotive that's already painted too, if you just want to add them. I just take a little short blade, a little wedge-shaped exacto blade like so, and then I just scrape the paint off down to the raw plastic, right? You want a good bond for the plate that you're going to put down to uh, support the ditch light. Otherwise, they just get knocked off. They'll fall off. You can see where the MU stand was here, so that'll be moved. And then you can see the hole there for the stanchion. So the plate will be resting up against that. You just want to scrape down the paint enough to uh, expose the plastic. So that when you bond it, you get a good clean
bond, right? Like so. And then you just take a small piece of, I use Plastruct 10 thou thin, number 90715, and then I cut, measure some small plates, pieces like so. And then I just weld bond them right on like so. Okay? On both sides. And that way when you go to put the pedestal stand, which I'll show you another pick later on, they fuse really well onto the plate there, which is already fused onto the frame. And then you can just paint it out black with a brush or just airbrush it. Okay? Make sure those were fused on really good. And then when I mount these ditch lights onto there, they'll be nice and solid. A really good solid bond, right? These will get cut. You can see, like I built these. I, I describe how I do these in the making of 381. And uh, uh, they work really well. Like you always end up with a few that, you know, it's just with attrition, right? It's like some, a piece might fall off. But that's why you make lots of extras. And if they're flooded good with cement and let dry 48 hours, they're just really, really solid. So I really like that method. And I've done that with uh, my previous locomotives as well. And so, yeah, that's about it for this stage. And then uh, um, the next one will be about the speaker box and the decoder installation, which I won't go at length with because that's been there, done that before, and there's plenty of people that do that well enough. I'll just point out a few things that I did to try to maximize the speaker enclosure volume and integrity for the smaller switcher uh, body, right? I'll let you know how that goes on the next upload, okay? Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a great day.